Welcome to the BTM channel's 38th short on retro tech, innovation, science, and space exploration. This video is our final installment in our series on the Tesla battery day. The short will be the eighth video. The other seven videos include the coverage of the presentation itself, seen in milestones 21 and short 33, and various individual presentation topics, seen in milestones 24 and shorts 34 through 37. Links to those videos can be found in the upper right hand corner of this video or in the description section below. Elon Musk dedicated a lot of time during Battery Day to environmentalism, climate change, production improvements, technology speculation, and raw materials. But the star of the show was, of course, the new battery itself. Dubbed the 4680 battery for reasons you will see in the next several segments, the design of the battery revealed several considerations that surprised technical pundits. The presentation started with a brief explanation of the current two battery types that Tesla manufactures for its use in its products. This was followed by a discussion of the thinking behind the new battery's form factor. The reveal then concluded with a detailed explanation of the battery's internal architecture. We'll provide a little more detail behind the battery chemistries of all three Tesla battery types and speculate on what direction Tesla is headed. And when we look at what, what's happened to date, at least in our products, we've moved from the 18650 form factor to the 2170 form factor through great collaboration with our partners, Panasonic, new partners like LG and CATL, and probably others in the future. Yeah. Uh, actually, so a slight note on, on why, why is the one called the 18650, although not on the slide, <laughs> uh, versus the 2170, is that the, the first two digits refer to the diameter, and the second two digits refer to the length. So that, that helps explain why are these weird, what about, what's up with these weird numbers. But the, like nobody could explain to me why, why there was an extra zero. <laughs> um, so, I, so I said like, okay, well, we're deleting the zero that nobody can explain <laughs> in, in future form factors. So that's why it's technically, it's like the 18650 bizarrely, but going forward it's the 2170 because we just got rid of the extra zero because it's pointless. <laughs> um, and this was, this was a evolutionary step going from 1865 to 2170 bringing 50% more energy into the cell. So first, before we get too far into it, let's talk about what is in a battery cell. We've got the cap and the, and the can negative and positive terminals of the cell. When you open that cell, you've got a tab connected to those terminals, what we call the jelly roll, which is the wound electrodes on the inside. Um, you can actually see what this looks like as you unwind it. This is over a meter long in a typical 2170 cell. So it's quite a long wi winding process. Um, and, and you can see the tab still there. Um, and then what, to explain what's actually going on here, we've identified we've got anode, cathode, separator, positive and negative terminal. Watch what happens as we, uh, there we go, discharge the cell. Got lithium moving from anode to cathode, and then the reverse. When we charge the cell, anode moving from uh, lithium moving from cathode to anode across the separator. This is the basic of what makes all lithium ion batteries, whether they're no matter what the form factor is. The battery day presentation provided a quick discussion of the 18650 and 2170 batteries and the energy differences between them. But we think it would be helpful to familiarize the viewer with Tesla's current batteries and their basic characteristics. The 18650 battery was the first battery type Tesla developed in cooperation with Panasonic. It is used for Model S and Model X cars, which have not been redesigned for the newer 2170 battery. The 18650 manufactured at Tesla is a variant of the 18650 commercial lithium ion battery. What makes Tesla's battery unique is the specific chemical formulation in its 18650 battery versus the chemistry of common 18650 cells available on the open market and the way Tesla engineers control the activity of the 18650 during use. The name 18650 refers to the battery's dimensions, a cylinder 18 millimeters in diameter by 65 millimeters in height. Tesla used to manufacture two kinds of the 18650 battery, one for its cars and one for its energy products. It now only produces 18650 batteries for its cars. The 18650 has been manufactured in two different anode chemistries, either all graphite or graphite silicon, and two different cathode chemistries, the later variant with less cobalt than the earlier variant. The 18650 generates 3.7 volts, 
and 12 watt hours of energy. Like the 18650 battery, the 2170 battery is a variant of the 21700 commercial lithium ion battery, commonly used for a wide variety of commercial and industrial products. The battery name 2170 also refers to the battery's dimensions, a cylinder 21 millimeters in diameter by 70 millimeters in height. Tesla manufactures two kinds of the 2170 battery, one for its cars and one for its storage products. The 2170 for cars, namely the Model 3 and Model Y, has an NCA chemistry, meaning a lithium ion cathode or positively charged zone, also containing nickel, cobalt, and aluminum. The 2170 for energy products has an NMC chemistry, lithium, nickel, manganese, and cobalt. Either 2170 variant has a graphite silicon anode or negatively charged zone. Assembled and charged, the 2170 can generate 3.7 volts and 17 watt hours of energy. With the construction of the Shanghai Gigafactory and publicly released announcements of a supplier deal between Tesla and Chinese battery giant CATL, speculation was rampant that Tesla's next generation battery would be a lithium iron phosphate, or LFP, prismatic design. A larger iron-based prismatic battery supposedly had the advantage of not using any cobalt from conflict zones, reduced manufacturing costs due to its higher energy storage per battery, and reduced battery count per vehicle, and being able to leverage CATL technology that already had a large installed base of users. Larger prismatic batteries also have the disadvantage of shorter life cycles, rapidly changing physical volume, and unfavorable thermal characteristics. LFP batteries also have lower energy density as compared to Tesla's 2170 lithium nickel cobalt aluminum batteries. These underlying problems strongly influence Tesla's design of the 4680. But when we look to the ideal cell design, if we were to do it ourselves, uh, we need to go beyond just um, what we're looking at us in front of us and, and study the full, the full spectrum of options. So as you can see, we, we kind of swept the key figures of merit, how much we can reduce the cost and how much vehicle range increases as we change the outer diameter of the cell. We found a sweet spot somewhere around 46 meters, uh, millimeters. But it's not just about a bigger form factor, like anybody could make a bigger form factor. Any fool, any fool could make a bigger form factor. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we not any fool. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there are problems uh, as you make cells larger. In fact, supercharging and thermals in general become really challenging as you make bigger cells. And this was the challenge that our team uh, set our sights on to overcome. And we did. We came up with this tabless architecture that maybe you've heard about um, that, that basically removes the thermal problem from the equation and allows us to go to the absolute lowest cost form factor um, and the simplest manufacturing process. And this is what, this is what we mean when we, when we talk about tabless. It's kind of a beautiful thing. Uh, yeah, that's, that's what these, that's what these t-shirts mean, but it's very esoteric. It's like nobody could figure it out, but. Yeah, um, we basically took the existing foils, laser patterned them, and enabled dozens of connections into the active material through this shingled spiral you can see. With simpler manufacturing, fewer parts, 50, 50 millimeter versus 250 millimeter electrical path length, uh, which is how we get all the thermal benefits. Yeah, this is important to appreciate. Like basically the, 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 the distance that that electron has to travel, you know, it's, it's just much less. Um, so uh, you actually have a shorter path length in a large tabless, a large tabless cell than you have in the smaller cell with tabs. This is a big deal. So even though the, the cell is bigger, it actually has uh, more power. Uh, the power to weight ratio is actually better than the smaller cell with, with, with halves. This is, uh, you know, again, like, this is quite, quite hard to do. It, so it's, uh, you know, nobody's done it before. Um, so, uh, and it really took a, a tremendous amount of effort uh, w within Tesla engineering to figure out how do we make a freaking tabless cell um, and have it actually work and, and then connect that to the top cap and it's, uh, there's a whole bunch of things that we're, you know, keeping a little secret sauce here that we're not telling everything. Um, but uh, sometimes what's <laughs> elegant and simple is still hard, and it, we, we, it took us a lot of trials, but we're we're happy where we ended up. Yeah, I mean everything's simple in, in recollection. You know, after you like uh, simple, everything it's hard until it's discovered, and then it's simple. <laughs> um, so anyway, but it's, there's a there's a lot of really cool things going on uh, that that enable uh, tablets, and um, uh, it's really you know, 
due to a really great engineering team, Drew and the, and the rest of the team have done amazing work in, in achieving this uh, tabless construction. Um, and it sounds, I think it may sort of sound a bit silly to some people, but it, it, this was, this is like, if for people that really know cells, this is a massive breakthrough. For cylindricals to be able to, to get rid of the tabs, dramatically simplifies winding and coating. Yeah. And has an awesome thermal and performance benefit. Yeah, um, that's a, just to be so, elaborate on that a bit. It's like when the cell is is going going through the the, the system, the system it, it has to keep stopping where all the tabs are. Yes. So you can't do a continu you can't do continuous motion uh, uh, production uh, if you have tabs. You have to keep stopping, and and then there's a rate at which you can start and stop and accelerate again, and and it really slows down the the rate of production. And then sometimes you get the tabs wrong. Um, and you also get lose a little bit of, of, of active area. It's 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 really a huge pain in the ass to have tabs um, yes. from a production standpoint. Yes. Um, and so when we put it all together and go to our new 80 millimeter length, 4680, we call this uh, new cell design. We get five times the energy with six times the power, and enable 16% range increase. Just form factor alone. Yeah, it's pretty great. Not shown in the presentation footage we have included was an explanation of the new battery chemistry. Powdered carbon in the anode is to be replaced with polymerized silicon, and there is to be a sharp reduction of cobalt, a stabilizing agent, in the cathode along with a significant increase in the percentage of nickel. From an energy perspective, one important metric that came out of the 4680 revealed specification was that it had five times the energy of the 2170. No one has ever accused us of being math whizzes or electrical engineers at the BTM channel, but we figure that 5 times 17 watt hours yields 85 watt hours, or perhaps 80 watt hours given a little inefficiency. This would mean Tesla would need less than 1,46.80s in the Model Y long range battery pack, a configuration that usually requires about 4,500 2170 batteries. Finally, continuing a theme from the 18650 and 2170 batteries. Will there be a cobalt-reduced NMC chemistry-based battery for power storage products planned for the 4680, along with the cobalt-reduced Super Nickel NCA variant? It wasn't mentioned during the Battery Day presentation, so perhaps a manganese variant of the 4680 battery will not be used. Tesla may be open to a separate power storage battery architecture, as demonstrated by the company's contract with CATL to supply LFP batteries for standard range Model 3s manufactured in Shanghai. CATL also had said earlier in 2020 that they planned on manufacturing special 50% nickel, 20% cobalt NMC batteries for Tesla in 2021 for the Chinese market. So, what's your take on Battery Day and Tesla's improvement in battery energy density and cost? Is the 4680 form factor and internal architecture a surprise to you? Share with us by dropping a comment below. We hope you enjoyed this 38th installment in our series of tech shorts. If so, mash that like button. If you are curious, we covered Tesla battery chemistries and manufacturing in episode 12. We apologize in advance for the shaky production values. We were learning then, as we are now. Hopefully you would agree we have gotten a little better. The link to that video can be found in the upper right hand corner of this video or in the description section below. Not a subscriber yet? Clicking the subscribe button and the bell notification icon will help both our YouTube standing and keep you informed when new episodes are released. Links to our previous episodes can be found below. Stay connected by occasionally checking our Instagram feed where we post content from our upcoming episodes and from episodes past that you may have missed. Make sure you follow our Twitter account where all new episodes are announced. And finally, join us on our Facebook page where we cover current news and events related to channel content. Thanks for watching.